Hi guys, it's the Island Girl and I'm back with another one for you today. And today we're checking out four ways British and American houses are very different. And I'm getting this one from Lost in the Pond. So go over and check him out. Hit the like button and the, all that good stuff. All right, guys. So we're going to get into this one because I want to know the four major differences between British houses and the US house. All right. So let's get into this video so if you're new to my channel it's the first time here come on in wrap back put a smile on your face and enjoy to all my regular schmegglers day one sweetie pie sweetie pools come on in wrap back put a smile on your face and enjoy let's get into this video all right guys here we go right about now and tea drinkers that we are we love our kettles don't we but they're not just any kettles these are ones you plug in and then hit the switch to turn on the plug because I forgot to mention that our plug sockets also have switches. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to houses, the things we live inside. If if you're watching this video, it's quite likely you're either inside a house right now or you're near one, because otherwise you wouldn't probably have internet access quite as easily. To anyone that might be new to this channel, come on in, get yourself a cup of tea. I'm, this isn't a genuine offer to come into my house. I'm just Join the channel. This is good. And hello to everybody who's been here a long time. Today, we're going to look at several ways in which British and American houses are very, very different. Having lived in the United States for over 11 years, I've lived in my fair share of houses here, just yeah. as I did in Britain. So I think I have a decent grasp of how houses work. Even tiny ones like this one, which is about 400 square feet. I'm joking. This is a professional studio. Don't question <laughs> me. And so without further ado, let's take a look at four ways that British and American houses are very, very different. Okay. The style. Well, Britain nor America is devoid of variety when it comes to their housing styles. And that's because, well, with each sort of passing phase of history comes new designs to meet new needs and just new style preferences. And because no. of this variety, I'm not going to cover every single one of them because that would keep us all here until next Wednesday, which would be good for my metrics, but not good for your sanity. So let's take a look at how some of the housing styles do vary from country to country. In Britain, a lot of the distinctive styles are also tied up with the period in which they were built. So you could go all the way back to the Tudor period and you do find Tudor housing dotted ah. around here and there. In fact, if you go to the city of York, for example, there's quite a lot oh, of, sort of Tudor buildings there. They're quite ornate with wood paneling and they're the sort of place that you might imagine that Shakespeare lived. But wood is less indicative of British houses than you would see in America, where wood is actually quite a common material for building houses. Yeah. In Britain, from about the Georgian period onward, you're going to see quite a lot of brickwork. Uh, Georgian period houses absolutely exist. People live in them, but they tend to be these opulent looking houses that oh, have a okay. white rectangle, which are just the windows. It's very nice. It, they look like dolls' houses that you should live in. But then come the Victorian age, we started moving toward these sort of like orangey brick buildings, right? And a lot of them were terraced houses, which is what Americans would call row houses. And they just look very industrial, right? You could imagine a chimney sweep going up and getting his face covered in soot. And then we move into the Edwardian period where houses are sort of similar to those of the Victorian age. They're just lighter colours with more chimney sweeps. Oh. Mary Poppins is anything to go by. Now, during World War II, when the Nazis bombed the ever-loving crap out of us, a lot of the houses went boom. And then after World War II, there was a housing boom. And you started to see a buildup of new, more simple houses, kind of like the one I grew up in. Now, that, that's a castle. Ooh, oh. That didn't happen. <laughs> um, but I, did, I grew up in something more like this. Oh, that's not okay. Lawrence's actual house. Despite what fairy tales may suggest, most of us have never lived in a chocolate box house, but those do exist. A chocolate box house is the kind of house you might see in the Cotswolds, right? It's very quaint oh. looking, it's got thatch roofing, and it looks like this. And if, like me, you're wondering Ooh. why it's called a chocolate box house, yet it doesn't look edible, it goes back to the 1950s slash 60s when chocolate boxes would have on their facade a kind of depiction of a beautiful English countryside. And these types oh. of houses would often feature on set box. Now again, this is by no means an entire repository of British houses. Um, neither is the following an entire repository of American houses. It's just the, the more common ones that you will see when you are here. So Cape Cod houses, you know these types of houses, right? They're the ones with the wood paneling down the side. And I said a moment ago that, you know, America makes good use of wood in this country because it's just so... So when he described all of those houses that are in Britain, I love those kind. Of, I love brick houses. I'm used to concrete walls and all of that in jamaica so that's for me that's a more sturdy house that's 
to me it's better here it's like you said wood 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 and wood everywhere and it's just to me easy to punch to a wall here <laughs> so that's a prime example i'm like jeez it's like paper thin which is crazy to me and they're so easily destroyed a little earthquake and poof, we're, we're, we're done so i love all the different styles of house well in terms of material not necessarily style i like the tudor style that uh black panel thingy and the way it's structured and the last house that he showed that was nice i prefer individual and not that um industrial structure kind of house i don't like it like, like like row houses i'm not into row houses i like when the houses are standing by themselves i just think it has a to me have a little a better look so much of it so many uh, woodlands around the country and it's a huge country from which to pull that resource so they do and it's cheap but yeah. funnily enough the cape cod style has its history with english settlers who came here in the 17th century and started building cape cod style houses in new england now during the post-world war ii period partly to provide you know housing to veterans coming back from war there was a revival of cape cod style housing and it started to be built not just in new england but all along the east coast and in the midwest and even out west anybody that's seen the goonies will know that and it was this style of housing that i first moved into when i moved to the united states and i've got to say even despite the midwest winters it was really warm you know you'd think it would be quite drafty because of all of the gaps in the wood you could go to specific streets or neighborhoods or areas of the United States and only find these houses for miles and miles. So I lived in one of those, but my grandparents-in-law lived in what is known as a ranch style house. Ranch, I like ranch really style. Buildings don't typically have two. two floors to them. And once again, these houses became popular after World War II. There was just generally a big sort of boom after yeah, World War II, it's beautiful. again in the United States um, in that regard. Uh, the 20th century though did see more and more revivalism of old styles. So you had, you know, mock Tudor, or shall I say revival Tudor, um, which more or less replicated Ooh. the kind of Tudor revival. buildings that you would see in England with some differences. And I've seen those types of buildings in Boston, for example. I've also seen them in Indiana. As well as that, the 20th century saw colonial revival. Colonial houses, don't yeah. Live in those houses. Maybe one day when I get that grand piano, I'll, I'll think about it. And so that's an extremely basic and rudimentary breakdown of some of the different styles that you'll see in each country. But there's one big, big difference between all of the houses in both countries, and it's this. And what is that? Ooh, that's Let's face it, it's time to face up to some home truths. Compared to America, Britain is microscopic. The United States is absolutely massive and needs to be stopped. And the same is true of each country's <laughs> average house size. Right. So in the United States, houses just tend to be way more spacious. Yep. We're not just talking about millionaire houses here. We're talking about your average house. So the that's average true. size of an American single family home is approximately 1,600 square feet. In the UK, we're looking at an average of about 900 square feet. Oh. So why the difference? Well, one reason is population density. In Britain, we're just, we're all a bit packed together. Yeah. Actually, that partially accounts for why everything is smaller in Britain. Not everything, not the cops. <laughs> But in America, there's just so much land and relative to that land, so few people. So, you know, make them as large as you want. And they do. They're huge. But they also are. a large majority of American houses are relatively new, meaning that they were able to benefit from, you know, building methods and materials that other countries like Britain were not. And the post-war expansion of American highways meant that this was enhanced even more. Those materials could be moved around the country more easily. And of course, this ushered in a more grand housing development. Now, all size aside, try saying that after 10 tepid tequilas, <laughs> things become subtly different once you're inside the houses of either country. Wow. Is gadgets the right word? I don't know. I'll have to fire my graphics team. Either way, we're essentially talking about access. Yeah. So when it comes down to the house size, it is massive here. And that's what I noticed. It doesn't matter if you have a $200,000 or $100,000 house, or you have a 500,000 going into the million. They are huge. You, you can get, like, literally get a four or five bedroom, three and a half bath for like a hundred and something thousand. Depending on which state you're in. Let me make that clear. It depends on the state. Because for here, if you're going to get a four or five bedroom, depending on the city in the state too. <laughs> so there are different things that come into play when it comes on to the sizes of the house and the price that you're going to pay. Because, well, 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 let's not get too in-depth into that. But yeah, the houses here are huge. And I noticed the houses in the UK are not as huge. 
accessories, the things you have in your house that make that house work, even when you're doing the house work. So for example, airflow, right? America's bigger on its overhead fans and air conditioning yeah, units. We don't, we don't usually use those. I mean, we like to punish ourselves, especially in the summer, but we can crack a window <laughs> open and it doesn't get oppressively hot always and so we've mostly been fine with this situation it does mean that insects get in so daddy long legs will get in the house and mosquitoes but it's a small price to pay for not having air conditioning Wait. i actually quite like air conditioning now that i've lived in the u.s speaking of something i don't understand i noticed that you guys don't have screen on your windows this is the second video that i've watched and that's something that is not common with you guys which to me is weird because you have bugs and you, and you like to open the windows and get a little fresh air in your house why would you not put screens up? That's just to me. I'm like, yeah. Of insects, you also don't see in Britain those insect screens that you put in the windows, hence why they're getting in. You in America, they're it. virtually in every it. house. But then again, you know, in Britain, we don't have black widows or brown recluses or oh. the types of mosquitoes that make your face go like this. It so I can see sense. why it's justified. I mean, you still get ants, or is that just me? Not sure how they get in, maybe <laughs> cracks in the wall, or maybe through the plug sockets. The plug sockets, of course, are different in both countries too. In Britain, you have the three pronged outlets, and in America, you sometimes have three, but occasionally two and they're smaller in America than they are in Britain. That's one of the few things about which you can oh. say that. Uh, separate taps, of course, for hot and cold water. Americans combine them all into one. Where's the logic in that? I'm joking. And <laughs> while we're on the subject of sinks, um, most British sinks don't have that sort of food waste disposal thing that you press yeah. the button and it does the noise. Just found that Amazing. out too. That was one of the best things I discovered after me, I didn't discover it. Somebody else came up with the idea and I didn't use it. <laughs> but it's amazing. It's just so pleasing to know that all of that gunk gets broken down. And just don't put your hamster in there. That's I've learned that lesson from someone else. <laughs> I didn't do it. Just read about it on Reddit. Letterboxes. Firstly, Americans don't call them letter. Okay, let's pause for a second. Because I noticed in the comment section under the video that I just did pertaining to um, European houses is different from American houses. That everyone is... Uh, a few people are saying... um. I don't think it's a good idea to have the insincorator inside of your kitchen because all those gong can blocking up the um uh, the pipes and all of that and guys it is food that you're putting down there not gar it's not a garbage disposal it's a food disposal <laughs> that's why it's in the sink so your extra food and stuff that you have on your plate you can throw it in and put, uh, put a little water in the sink and press your button or flick a switch and the food will be just chopped to pieces fine as can be it like it like purees it so it's not anything that is going to be stuck into the pipe all right so let me clarify that not to mention here we go the mailbox is another the thing boxes, but mailboxes and typically don't have them on the door but outside in the garden yeah. yard the garden slash yard is different often smaller in britain but very well kept up depending on the family and just yeah. massive yards here with you know mesh fences and things like that or picket fences uh, back inside a lot of properties in the united states will have walk-in closets that are built into the actual walls of the house whereas in britain you bring your own closet slash wardrobe to put your that is interesting. You're telling me that you guys don't necessarily have walk-in closet. You have to make your own closet? Huh. Your clothes in. And that, that takes up more space. Interesting. So we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot every step of the way. Except huh. when it comes to washing machines and dryers. How cool is this? We combine them both into one giant cube. Oh. America has two separate, separate cubes. Units. And tea drinkers that we are, we love our kettles, don't we? But they're not just any kettles. These are ones you plug in and then hit the switch to turn yeah. on the plug. Because I forgot to mention that our plug sockets also have switches. <laughs> and then, you know, you turn it on. Don't need a stove top. And it heats no. up just like that. You've got your and water. And off when it's ready. Pour it into a mug. There's your cup of tea. In America, you do have the stove top kettles. And part of me likes that because it... It does this really pleasing whistling sound at the end. Now, if you were paying attention during that list, you may have noticed that I touched on some of the terminological differences when it comes to housing in either country. And that brings us on to our final entry. Okay, so there he goes again with the um, the kettle. We have a lot of plug-in kettles here. That's, that's, that's what I have right now. I used to have the one on the stove top, and I'm like, oh, this is... It's easier for the kids to handle if I just plug in, pop on, shuts off when it's the water is done boiling, and voila, there it is, your happy hot water. Um, not to mention, uh, 
I didn't even realize that you guys have your uh, washer and dryer in one unit when while we have them in separate units. And uh, the plugs, the plugs. Well, I think the US, America needs to get on board when it comes on to your plugs. I, I just love the idea of your plugs. The mailbox, yep, outside in the front of the yard, not on the house. Um, it, it, it's, 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 there's so many different unique differences that they can actually point out. The words. It wouldn't be Britain and America if they weren't two countries separated by a common language. And the same is true of the housing world. So let's finish with a rapid fire round looking at those very words. So here in Chicago, I live in a flat. Except in America, they don't call it flat. It's called an apartment. Something else that you'll find in America, though, are these condominiums or condos, if you don't fancy saying a word that has condos. Single parent and stuff. And we do have those in Britain. They're, just, they're usually called common hold properties. And I suppose most British people wouldn't go around using that term, whereas you actually hear the term condo quite a lot. It's been suggested to me that I move into a condo. And Single people It stuff. sounds good. I mean, when I first heard the term, I thought I was, it sounded like I might be moving onto a, a lakeside boat or something like that. <laughs> or small. It is like an apartment, it's but it's would buy it's real yeah. estate yeah as a child and young adult i grew up in a house that was known as a semi-detached house that's when you have a house adjoined to one other house on one side but not on the other side in the united states this is known quite simply as a duplex, oh, the duplex. Which is a wrestling move okay. if it is adjoined on both sides with another house then you are part of a line of houses that are known as terraced houses in britain in america they're known as row houses because they're all in a row Interesting. Then there's council housing in Britain versus the projects in the United States. And that's just another way of saying oh. public housing. To control the electricity oh. flow in Britain, you have the mains power. In America, you have the grid power. And what if you're sick and tired of the place that you're living in and you just want to relocate somewhere else? In America, you would just simply move. In well, Britain, no, you'd move house. And on that note, I'm going to move out to my outro transition because this is the end of the video. Let me know in the comments below if you're watching this from your house right now. I am. <laughs> if you're not, leave a comment either way. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A big reminder, by the way, if you want to keep up with me on a day-to-day -day basis and just see some of the stupid trivia that I... Look, guys, I ain't going to lie. That was amazing. I like how he explained everything i cannot believe there's so many differences just just the little stuff so can you imagine if he was literally going more in depth how much more it would have been um interesting it's the island girl and i'm running out of here it is 15 minutes after 8 a.m it's late start school today i don't know why i'm telling you all this <laughs> it's a late start for school today so the kids i'm about to wake the kids up so they can start eating breakfast and get ready to go to school but <laughs> with that said it's your island girl and i'm running out of here i hope you guys enjoy this one don't let me know in the comment section what you guys think all right and don't forget to let me know what you'd like me to check out next it's your island girl and i'm running out of here love you guys to the max and i definitely definitely check you guys in, the, in another video don't forget to slap that like button if you haven't already because it helps the video to go out the algorithm to pick up the video so i don't get lost in the pond like <laughs> I'm not in the pond, but in this big place, <laughs> in this big world out here. Not only that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Come on in, become a part of the island family. Love you guys. See you in another one. Bye-bye.